Thank you, James. This is Marie. I hope um, Amy and I are going to be switching off back and forth. So I hope you don't find it a, too jarring. To start off, I wanted to briefly explain what we are doing. Our one-year planning grant from the NEH will investigate if information about reformatted serials is relevant for libraries making decisions about preservation and maintenance of print serial collections. Reformatting of print has been going on for some time, but one of the big projects we're focusing on for this grant is the NEH Brittle Books program. NEH began giving libraries and consortium money in the mid-1980s, and in 1988, the U.S. Congress voted to give NEH $8 million. The money was to establish a 20-year project to reformat Brittle Library Books. NEH awarded money to many U.S. libraries, mainly academic, and the projects focused on monographs, but some serials were also included. The plan targeted 50,000 crumbling volumes a year, reformatting them initially through photocopying and microfilming and later digitization, preserving the contents of more than a million brittle books. To give you some background about our plan for the grant, I wanted to talk to you about paper. Paper is CRL's free online registry containing serial records for print and born digital journals preserved in print archive programs and trusted digital repositories in the United States and Canada. Paper includes downloadable titles and holdings information where available for preserved serials. It also includes a directory of print preservation programs with information about the conditions under which the content is kept, things like humidity and temperature, as well as profiles of the programs. We also include statistical information and some analysis about what, what has been archived in paper. We hope the print community will use paper to make decisions about their weeding efforts. Paper is freely accessible on the web at papr.crl.edu. Please go and take a look at what we're doing. Over to Amy. Periodic review of the data in paper and discussion with the library community on the progress of print archiving has highlighted the problem that we have a long way to go to preserve the full corpus of print serials. In 2016-2017, CRL undertook a project funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation to develop and cost out a methodology and strategy to identify the critical corpus of print journals important to academic research in the humanities and social sciences. CRL aggregated the print journal records of the library collections from 19 institutions, including the New York Public Library, Columbia University, Cornell, Princeton, and the Big Ten Academic Alliance, as well as CRL and Linda Hall Library. The aggregated records resulted in a list of over 462,000 serial print titles. Only 9.1% 9, 9 of these had registered print commitments in paper. And to answer those who say it will all be digitized anyway, only 1.3 of the titles had a copy in a trusted digital repository, and only 0.5% of those also had registered paper commitments. While 9.1% of the 462,000 plus titles were in paper, the publication dates of the journals show us that current titles are being preserved in greater numbers than historical journals, and although fewer in overall numbers, only about 8% of the historical journals from the Critical Corpus Project are in shared print collections and registered in paper. Preserving older journals on microfilm is an important aspect of the Brittle Books microfilming projects and something we'll highlight in our project. A closer look at the social science and humanities titles registered in paper shows that 35% of the serial runs have discernible gaps in the holdings. And this number is likely much higher because 85% of the registered holdings were not physically validated to identify gaps or condition problems. Microform holdings can help fill the gaps of missing volumes or entire runs of serials. And there are other problems with serials. As you may know, everything was not always included in a journal run. Things like supplements, special issues, and indexes weren't always described when publishers and libraries created cataloging records. In addition, binding sometimes missed issues. So we need to make sure that what's been archived is validated and the gaps are identified. 
So what about other formats? Can they help us close the gap? Microfilm is a format worth considering when we think about preservation. It has been estimated to last from 100 to 500 years if held under the right conditions. It doesn't take up as much space as paper, and its images do not degrade or fade as papers do. However, it's not a format that researchers love to use. It's awkward to handle, and it requires specialized equipment that may not last into that same 100 to 500 year period. But as I said, librarians can decide if microfilm is a format we can rely on for purposes of preservation. In terms of the NEH Brittle Books Project, certain standards were put in place for the microfilming. These included having three copies of the film, a master, a master negative, and an access copy. Also, the NEH required top-notch filming, and so quality film was used. Those who received funding developed good practices and processes for checking the completed film, and they developed cataloging conventions for the filming records. All of this makes it seem that the NEH microfilm is a bit more reliable than the usual microfilm sets. In addition, we're collecting some reformatted digital serial records for our test bed. Obviously, we all love digital for both access and preservation, but I must remind you that it requires some fairly stringent preservation activities that must figure into the equation when thinking about how we are going to build our safety net of archived serials. We're now going to talk about the five phases of our grant. In the first phase, which is happening now, we are mining metadata. This means locating and acquiring existing library and publisher metadata for historical print serials that were reformatted through key humanities preservation microfilming programs and credible digitization efforts. So where are these records? We did some FOIA uh, requests to the NEH for grant reports, which sometimes contained lists of titles with the schools who donated their titles. We are also looking in OCLC and in local library catalogs of known NEH grant recipients. I also wanted to give a shout out to Sandy Nyberg of Lyricis, formerly Solonet, because she provided us with the information you see on your screen and more about the Solonet projects. We are also asking publishers and libraries if we can have their records, and from these we are assembling our test bed. The records and data gathered in phase one will require close review, and that begins with phase two, the bibliographic analysis. We need to closely review the bibliographic records to determine whether the microfilm holdings are a true replacement for the print titles of interest. And the core data elements for determining an appropriate match can be found in the listed fields on the screen. The better the data, the more accurately we can compare titles and collections. Keeping catalog records up to date, even after a project is over, is essential to future preservation work. Phase three, or the holdings analysis, is critical to ensure strategic incorporation of microfilm holdings to fill gaps of missing volumes and issues. This can be complicated by different expressions of holdings. This slide shows the print holdings and the microfilm holdings from the same library for the Practical Mechanics Journal, the bib record shown on the previous slide. The print indicates that volume two is missing, but the microfilm holdings do not. And unfortunately, there isn't enough information to tell if either holdings are incorrect or if the library borrowed volume two for filming purposes. Perhaps a transaction like that would be recorded outside of the catalog record. This supporting information is essential when preserving serials. And there is a way to incorporate this type of information when registering shared print holdings and we will attempt to apply the print disclosure standard to microfilm and register the holdings in paper. To truly integrate print and other formats in paper in order to register the full extent of serials preserved, CRL will need to enhance current functionality and provide new features in paper. Our focus during phase four will be to create specifications and a plan to provide a more complex, useful aggregation of holdings in paper that will enable the user to view the full complement of holdings for titles or collections of interest. In phase five, we're going to talk to the library community and share our results and seek your thoughts on what we've found. We hope all of you will participate. 
So we've learned a few things already. The biggest takeaway is that information about cooperative humanities preservation and digitization efforts is at risk. This is because there is not enough information out there about these programs, and many of the people involved are retiring or have retired. This impacts what we can learn about these programs. And this is a risk because these programs weren't always consistent about how they recorded their metadata and their processes. A lot of the NEH standards evolved over time. Early work did not consistently include bibliographic notes that indicated NEH paid for the work. Grant reports didn't always record what was done in enough detail. This makes the work that was done less valuable because libraries holding the film may not even know that the film is part of the NEH's program. We need to recover this information to ensure the work is adequately documented for future users. We have also learned that masters from two of the programs, RLG and Solonet, have been donated to the Library of Congress because they were too expensive to maintain. We don't know if the Library of Congress will continue to share these masters as additional preservation copies on which to rely. In conclusion, CRL is creating a testbed of information on important print journals reformatted through major humanities preservation microfilming programs and credible digitization efforts. We want to assist the usefulness we want to, sorry, assess the usefulness of the acquired information in relation to other existing data on serials archived in print. This preliminary effort will produce a methodology and plan to further integrate information about reformatted serials with the growing body of open access information in the paper registry. So now it's your turn. Will you and your patrons accept these additional reformatted serials as an archived copy? Will these additional copies be needed in the future? Can these copies serve as part of the safety net of archived copies for the library community? Please let us know what you think and submit your questions in the chat box. Thanks, Marie and Amy. That's a great overview of the program uh, as, as it's getting started. This is a planning grant, uh, and so we're very much looking for the feedback from the participating institutions and those of you who are with us today. Um, as a reminder, the, the chat screen is available for you to answer some questions, and we do have a couple of questions um, that have been submitted that perhaps Amy and Marie can address here. So the first question says, when I think of microfilm, I think of newspapers. Do you see microfilmed newspapers as part of this work? Well, first of all, paper is really only for serials. So at this point, uh, we're not going to be including newspapers in the paper database. However, there are some other programs that CRL has that do involve the preservation of newspapers. I don't know if somebody else wants to speak to this. James, and I just want to add, of course, that uh, newspapers are uh, a core, I, core function of CRL and we have been paying attention in uh, areas outside of paper itself in terms of the long-term uh, information about newspaper preservation and digitization. And I'll just remind those uh, who are listening of CRL's ICON database, the International Coalition on Newspapers, uh, which has been a registry of materials reformatted and digitized uh, in the, the newspaper uh, landscape. Uh, we've devoted significant energy um, in previous years in harvesting and aggregating data on information on newspapers that have been digitized through trustworthy uh, programs uh, such as the Library of Congress and Chronicling America but also through um, national library programs and through uh, uh, for-profit or commercial providers who are digitizing newspapers. We see this kind of data as uh, significant uh, in terms of um, libraries choices to acquire, uh, retain, or preserve newspaper materials. But as Marie said, I think it's, uh, it's a bit outside of the scope of this particular program. Uh, we saw this program as uh, very much complementary to the print serials retention activities that are going on. We'd be happy to have a further discussion about the newspapers at a future date. Okay, so here's another question that just came in. What are some of the cataloging in inconsistencies you've seen with the Brittle Books records? 
think the the biggest this is this is Amy. The, I think the biggest um, inconsistencies we've seen are a lack of identifiers that help us link the the print with the microfilm or various microfilm records to each other. There is a, a lack of um, of what we call the 776 field, which would also refer to other formats. There is it. There are inconsistencies inconsistencies in naming the projects and in creating series um, notes or or titles that would that would help draw all of the records together. So um, I would say within a library, they have been they have been consistent. But once you're you're working outside or trying to compare holdings from various libraries or multiple libraries, then that's where the, the problems come in. Now there's another question. Um, the next question that came in is, does the project include non-English language serials? If yes, what languages? Um, the project is not excluding any any language or country of, um, of publication, or um, we are we are really just trying to trace the the projects themselves and all of the the records that that go in, into those. So um, we are not updating records uh, f for those projects. Um, we don't, if particularly if we don't have that material here at CRL, uh, but we won't be excluding those. So any languages or countries? Yeah, this basically we're going to be trying to find any record that was um, formatted, reformatted through these projects. So I have seen projects that were for Slavic languages and for Indian languages, in addition to uh, European languages, were sometimes included in more general projects. Sometimes the project really just covered um, American historical materials. So it really would depend on the project itself, um, what we would find in terms of other languages. I hope that answers your question. OK, um, there's another question that came in. How can I find out if microfilm in my library's collection is part of the NEH Brittle Books project? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, in some cases, we, really, we could probably help you. Uh, we could probably look at the uh, records and maybe figure out if they were part of the NEH project or not. In some cases, because the records weren't always marked in some way to show that they are part of the NEH project, uh, we might have to look in some other places. Um, we do know that certain schools participated in these projects. We know who got the money, so maybe we could help you that way. And um, a lot of the projects were done through consortial um, project, through a consortial partnership. And so in those cases, the consortium may have more information about whether or not um, your microfilm might be part of one of the NEH projects. This is James. I just had a, a follow-on question, I think, to that thought was, um, would we preclude the um, inclusion of any information from libraries who wish to contribute their serials holdings data in microfilm, say, outside of these NEH programs? Is there the possibility of inc inc increasing the scope for that? I don't see why not. Um, I mean, this project is basically just for, um, ju has just described NEH work, but once we have uh, made changes to paper and sort of created a plan for how we can take microfilm into paper, I think we could be looking outside the scope of just the NEH projects. Although we probably want to make sure that the microfilm is actually archived, not just sitting on a library shelf for access purposes. Thanks. Okay, um, another question. Will these serial records be uploaded in WorldCat and CRL catalog as the project progresses for public access? Um, I believe that most of the, the records are in WorldCat um, currently uh, because most of the, the libraries that participated in the projects were OCLC members. Um, they, are, they are not in the CRL catalog and unless we were to own a copy of the microfilm, um, which we do, CRL does have some copies of the microfilm, um, we would not put it in the CRL catalog. However, um, we will 
test putting it into paper so we can test the the um, the preservation disclosure statements and how they work for microfilm and once paper is the functionality in paper is enhanced to to incorporate the the microfilm holdings we will uh, create a kind of a project um, an umbrella project description and attach the holdings onto that um. this is great we welcome any any additional questions um, let me just make a comment on on this um, program which we view as a, a very significant uh, research undertaking uh, and uh, ho hope to have some f additional feedback and, and comments from the community about the utility of this data. Um, I do want to comment that here at CRL we are seeing um, ongoing um, th threats, if you will, to the long-term sustainability of the um, archival record in microform. Uh, we've seen a number of the commercial providers out there, for instance, uh, who are relinquishing their uh, claim towards the long-standing preservation of, of microform vaults. Uh, it's no secret, I think, to anybody uh, who's listening that uh, microfilm or microform as, as a format is, is not in vogue um, this year, uh, although we might have um, uh, a resurgence of you know physical based research uh, at some point in the future uh, but we're seeing that the the sustained uh, commitment to the long stern long standing preservation of these materials uh, is not is not absolutely assured we're very grateful uh, to have learned that the Library of Congress was uh, willing to step up and take on the microform masters for the RLG uh, cooperative vault materials and those of Acerl. Uh, we think that that's a, um, a, a terrific um, development within the the saga of of microform masters, um, as Marie suggested. However, you know the the continued access from the community of libraries that uh, initially created those materials um, is uh, it, it shifts a little bit uh, now that they're in uh, safe hands. Can we actually get access to those materials in the future? If should we need to, these are questions that we want to continue to explore. Uh, as we, we work through this program and as we have further discussions with the print archives community about uh, the integration of, of these, uh, uh, the materials in these formats as part of our long-term print preservation strategy.